Hey there guys, um, just uh, finishing up some stuff really quick as the stream gets started. Um, uh, apologize for the delays today, today is Valentine's Day and so I am um, currently having some... Hey there guys, um, just, uh, so my, uh, some stuff really my day has been a little crazy with Valentine's started. Day so far. Um, so I'm slowly getting everything together. Um, so for those of you who came from Twitter, um, you'll probably remember that I mentioned on there that I have something kind of awesome to announce today. Um, so let me go ahead and finalize that. Um, please note that this is still um, very, very early in the planning stages. Um, nothing is fully official as of yet. Um, but it's slowly looking like it's going to be happening mid-March. Um, basically what I decided to do is to go through and host my own game jam. And so what is going to go on is I'm going to be hosting what I call the Coda Game Jam. Um, so the idea is that a lot of times with game development, uh, people like to use tools like Unity and stuff, which are good and all, but I want to encourage people to learn uh, programming languages like, uh, like C Sharp, Java, C++. And so the idea is to go through and create a uh, simple game using an actual programming language um, in about 96 hours. Um, I'm doubling the amount of time because, again, it is coding rather than... Um, rather than something like uh, Unity or Unreal. Um, that said, there will be a Unity and Unreal section. Um, they just won't have as awesome of prizes. Um, so speaking of prizes, uh, there will be prizes. I've got some big name companies that have uh, already started giving me some prizes to give out to people. Um, some actually cool stuff. We have some t-shirts and stuff and other things. Um, so please keep an eye out on this. I'm not quite ready to announce who all is sponsoring this with prizes and such. But um, that will probably be announced either next weekend or the weekend after, depending on how fast I can get everything rolling up with this. Um, so yeah, for those who are interested, you, it's going to be uh, free to sign up. Um, I'm going to be possibly having issues with shipping prizes, so if anybody wants to help out with that, that would be greatly appreciated. But again, this jam will be open to everyone online. If you go to game, jams.gamejolt.io, uh, code a game jam, code a game, slash code a game, you'll be able to find it there. Um, I will be putting this on the Twitch stream as well. So um, keep an eye out there. Again, this is still very, very early stages of planning. Um, so, you know, there's still a lot more uh, to go with this. So let me go through now and just update that. And the start date for this will be March uh, 20th, Friday, and it'll go till that following Monday. So um, feel free to uh, bookmark that, keep an eye on that, and uh, remember that that's coming up, that's in the uh, description below now. So there's going to be lots of cool things that will be given out again. Um, free entry, you know, there's no big things there. The big thing is I really want to encourage everyone who does this to uh, go ahead and code. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get started now with today's stream. So, if you remember, um, a while back we went through and we made a Pong clone as one of the first games. So today I want to go through and I want to talk about some things such as um, optimizations, um, optimizations, how you can go through and make your um, how you can make your games a little bit uh, smoother when they run, as well as uh, showing how we can go through and make them look better, feel better, and uh, be more game-like. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go through now and I am going to go ahead and start by uh, creating a branch for this. So this branch is going to be the original uh, version of the game and we're going to be editing the master version of this. 
So what this means is that if you want to see what the original game looked like, you can go down here and click on original. Um, to see the newest version, you can click on master. Um, so let's go through now, and let's start out by going ahead and pulling this. I've already gone ahead and made uh, pulled it back down onto this machine. And we're going to go through now and open up Visual Studio. I'm going to have to fix this error at some point. So let's bring this up. We'll see. Ping. Okay. So I want to go through. Let's go through and just run it real quick, and I can show you guys what this all looks like so far. So we have our basic ping clone here, pong clone here. Go ahead and unpause, and the game starts. We've got that nice little sound effect already, and our little AI as well. So overall, it's a pretty good start. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is showing you guys how you can add in some little things. So let's start with the frame rate. So the frame rate right now is um, managed by this Sleep 5. You'll remember, um, in order to make the game not go like really, really dumb fast, um, so in order to not make the game go like really, really overkill fast, which I can show you real quick, we go through and we do that. Let's see how this looks. So if we go through and we remove that, you'll see that we get this uh, ridiculously fast game. And the reason for that is that it's basically maxing out our CPU. If we go through and we run the game, you know, even on something like the main menu, if we bring up the game over here, you'll be able to see that. Oops. Start by name, ping. You know, we're gradually going up in CPU usage. It's not terribly high right now, but we were to go through and actually play the game, uh, it's going to really quickly bolt up. Not too bad still, but still, more than we want. So what we need to do is we need to go in here and um, we need to figure out a way to limit the frame rate without anything too crazy. So what we want to do is we want to make this run at 60 frames per second. So if you'll remember, we have all of our main updates there. So what we can actually do is do SF clock timer and uh, what this is is this is our timer for the game and then we're gonna have a time which is elapsed um, and we used this at the game jam last weekend to limit how fast um, how fast our game was uh, updating before so now what we can do is we can do or how much faster update animations were going so now what we're gonna do is we're going to do elapsed is equal to timer get elapsed time and if elapsed dot as and we're going to do microseconds to get a much better accuracy is greater than and so in this case what we want to do is we want to do it every 1 60th of a second so 1 over 60 is that and microseconds are I believe 10 to the 9th 1 second to microsecond yeah it's a little bit more so that times 1 million, which is 16,666. So whenever it's greater than 16,666, um, what we're going to do is we're then going to update everything. And what this will do is it'll make sure that it only updates in those time frames. And when it does so, we're going to do timer.restart as well in order to restart the timer and go for the next one. So now if we bring this up, play it, you'll notice it's a little slower now. Um, the reason for that is that before we were probably getting somewhere at uh, 120 frames per second. So if we really wanted to, we could do this times 2, just 13, uh, 33, and that'll bring us up to 120 frames per second um, and keep it there. I don't particularly like that either though, um, and actually sorry, that is slowing it down. We actually want to divide by 2. So it's 833 then. Because we're going, uh, we're lowering the time it takes. So this will double the frame rate effectively. So now if we go through you can see that we're back to our normal frame rate. Um, another thing we can do again, we could up it even further. However, that's actually going to be a little bit bad. You'll get into tearing then. Um, what we actually want to do is we want to keep it at that 60 frames per second speed, um, but we want to make sure that we speed up everything else around the game. 
Um, so let's go through now and and what we're gonna do is we are going to go through now and update the paddle speeds and then we will um, be going through and doing some other stuff. So right now we have all of our paddle speeds set up like this. What we actually want to do is we want to add a speed for paddles. So what I'm going to do is we have our paddle player uh, .h. So let's go up to that real quick. Um, go to entities, paddle AI. So what we actually want to do is go here. So let's do define speed which is the um, maximum movement speed that we can use for the paddle. So right now, if we look at our paddle player, it's just going from uh, 1 or 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this to about 4. It might be too fast. And we're going to set paddle speed. And this is then going to be multiplied by that. So uh, times paddle speed. And we're going to do the same thing here. And then we're going to do the same thing here, except not that, but like that, and that. So that'll go through and make sure that we stay there. Um, and then we're going to go down to the paddle AI, and we're going to do the same thing. So in this case, um, this is our speed here. So we want to go through and multiply that again by the paddle speed. Um, and this will allow us to keep our variation while still maintaining that. Uh, stuff from before. So we have our different difficulties and stuff. So let's go through and take a look at how this looks. So you can see that's a lot better now. Um, the only downside is that down speed. So let's go see what's going on with that player paddle. Uh, we have that, we have that, SF, keyboard. That times paddle speed, that times paddle speed. Oh, interesting. That should be doing that. Nope. Uh oh, we're not going into that loop there, apparently. Let's see here. What's going on? Let's see why we aren't getting there. So there's that. Try this again. Alright. Oh man, I cannot type today. So, velocity there that and to do that update that moves based on the velocity ah that's why so um, the reason for that was because it was multiplying these two and then subtracting so we actually want to have it uh, do that the other way we want to have it uh, make sure that we go through and do it like that so let's uh, we can undo those breakpoints there order of operations there. So that'll fix that. So now we need to fix the ball speed as well because that ball is very very slow. So if we come into here we can see that our ball's velocity is determined right there and right up here as well if I'm not mistaken or not. No, not in this case. Okay, so what we want to do is we are going to want to um, up here and we're going to want to do define ball speed and we're going to set that to 4 as well. Um, we'll come into here and what we want to do is basically go through and we want to keep these right here are changing the velocity so we don't really want to worry about that. Um, that we as well we don't really need to worry about again we're multiplying it we're increasing the percentages of uh, how fast it goes. The big things that we are actually going to want to do is we're going to want to change this reset here for the ball speed um, and we're also going to want to change that one so let's 
So we'll bring this over now. So you'll see now that that's definitely a lot faster. And of course we're also getting this uh, nice, nicer speed for everything. And you'll see that he is attempting... Oops. So we're going to want to go through and fix up our AI a little bit as well. Because our AI right now is not really all that capable. Um, so what we're going to do... are going to go ahead and try and see if we can beat him. I don't think we will in this case. So we now need to go through and make our AI a little bit, um, not necessarily smarter, but we want to make him more human-like. Um, so the result of that is that we need to program um, however people would play Pong. And so basically what you try and do is you try and predict where the ball is going to end up. Um, and then you go to that point, and then if you see the ball is going somewhere else, you go and you match up with it. So, what we want to do is, we, when the ball is going away from the player, we'll want to do one thing, and when it's going towards, we'll want to do another. Um, so, what this means is that we have to now take the ball's X into consideration for this. So, we want to add a couple of things. We want to add a target for where he is going. And um, we want to watch which way the ball is going, and then we want to set a target and move to that target. And then if the ball comes towards us, then we'll want to do something else. So let's go through now, and we're going to go through and add an SF vector 2F target, which is our target location of where we think we should go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we'll need to do if this ball object uh, velocity dot x is and what we want to do is we want to determine based on which player we are is when we're going to want to do something uh, different. And so this is actually going to be a little bit of a weird, um, it's going to be look a little weird. Player number is zero. So this is going to be really weird to some of you, um, but I promise it won't be that bad. Um, basically, if the player is zero, then uh, we want to check greater, otherwise less than zero. I don't know if that's going to work, but I thought it would. Hmm, yeah, that's not going to work. So what we're going to do now is... Uh, We'll do a void paddle AI, and what we're going to have is um, ball away. And what that's going to do is it's going to just check whether the ball is moving away from us or towards us based on our player number. So this is a private method. No one else needs to see it. And what this is simply going to do is it's going to take into consideration our player number, player number zero, then we're going to do one thing. So in this case, if the we're player one, we want to check if it's greater than zero, because that turned true. And um, basically what this is going to do is if the ball is moving away, it returns true. If we're player one, um, and if we're player two, like right there, then we want to check for less than zero. And so that'll signal that we're, it's moving away then. So now what we can do is we say, if this ball away, then um, go to target. Else, we go like we did from before normally. 
So that'll um, give us a little bit more control over him. So in this case, what we're going to want to make sure we do as well is our target, when it's moving towards us, is equal to SF vector 2F. Zero, zero. Um, in that case, there should be no target. Um, you know, there's no need for that. Um, and actually, what we can do further to make sure that we uh, never, well, what we're going to do is we're going to set the x to negative 1. And so here what we need to do is really we need to predict where we think the ball is going to go. Um, what this means is that we need to select how we how the AI thinks that the player will hit the ball. So what that means is we kind of need to look at how it's going to ricochet. So like if we go through and we play the game like normal, which we'll go through and do. Um, when we do this, we're kind of trying to predict where the ball is going to go. So again, you can already see like just the fact that we aren't const that the AI is constantly not keeping up with that ball uh, makes it look a little bit better. So what we now want to do as well is we're going to want to go through and we're going to want to make this a little bit less uh, jittery. Um, that'll help to make things look a little smoother as well. So um, let's go through. Sorry, just trying to check something. So, um, to make it less jittery, what we're going to do is we're going to put that in parentheses, and then we're going to subtract that out. And then we can go through and um, we can check to see um, what the absolute value of this comes out to be. So when we subtract those out, um, we're either going to get a positive or a negative number. We don't particularly care about that well. Um, Actually, we can do something even cooler now. So, basically what we want to do is we want to check if um, what that value is. So let's go through, and we're going to do float temp is equal to that. And if temp is, in this case, less than, we're going to say, like, negative 5f. Um, then we're going to do one thing. And in this case, if temp is greater than 5.0f, then we're going to go the other way. Um, what that'll do is it'll give it a little bit of a variation on the... Um, it'll give it a little bit of a uh, more stable point. It'll try and keep it within a boundary rather than on a precise point. So you can already see that that's uh, helping out a little bit. Um, but it's still kind of jittery. But it gives that, that uh, nice little uh, bounce for everything. Oh man. So he's very, very fast, unfortunately. So we're not going to be able to beat him in his current form. Um, so what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to slow him down a little bit again. And then after we slow him down, we'll be able to do some other stuff. So right now, I think that we set his difficulty to medium, though, if I'm not mistaken. Paddle AI difficulty. No, we set him to the hardest difficulty. So that uh, sounds about right then for what he should be. So let's go ahead now and set him to difficulty 2 and just make sure that that's not too crazy. And then we're going to go through and we'll give him more, uh, more natural behavior. So he's already got this nice little um, intelligence to him where he's able to, uh, not really super intelligent though, um, what it's doing is it's just kind of faking it. So um, this is still, I think, a good uh, medium pace um, because it's definitely beatable. I'm just not very good at Pong. That should be able to get him. Yeah. 
So that's a pretty good one still, I'll say. Um, if you guys think that that's still a little too crazy, we can, of course, lower the speeds. Um, but I'm going to keep it like this. And then here is the normal player-to-player -player version. Um, this should be a little bit easier than a normal uh, player because he can't move as fast. And you'll notice that he keeps setting the ball to be very slow. And now it's a little faster. Ooh, lost. Ooh. I like the creativity and the different playing styles for this so far, actually. So we'll probably want to go through and change the speeds a little bit again. Um, the one other thing, though, that I'm noticing is that the ball doesn't seem to be... does not seem to be multiplying by the speeds properly. One dot velocity. Yeah, I guess it is. So let's go through, and real quick, we're going to slow him down just a little bit more to ease up. Um, so we'll put him at 70% of the speed there, and maybe even 50% speed there. He's very good. 70, and then this will be where we're getting to a normal player. Um, and that should hopefully make things a little bit easier. Except now he can't win at all. <laughs> So we'll just go through and keep that like it is. Make level one just a tiny bit easier. Um, okay, so we have all of that now. So now what we want to do is when he hits the ball, we want to have the um, target area uh, be what we move to. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go through, and normally he's tracking the ball. Now we're going to do it with the target here. So what this means is that we have to simply change this from ball to target. And that'll go ahead and give us a target to move towards. Um, once we have set target, then we can go, then he'll go through and try and get there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set um, if target x is less than 0 then target.x is equal to 1, target.y is equal to rand mod, and this is going to be, I think, how big did we make the window? 600f. And that will go ahead and give a simple target that we can use. So when the ball is going around, he will go and try and maintain at a specific position. Oof. So there's that. Um, what we'll also want to do is we're going to want to set the ball's velocity to be... Um, Basically, we want to set it to be a, um, a specific speed that can't be broken. So what we want to do now is if so if this velocity and this velocity dot y is less than, what we're going to do is we're going to have a max speed for the ball. which, in this case, we're going to make it, um, so usually after three hits, it gets too fast, so what we're going to do is we're going to do four times 1 point, four times 1.25, and then that times 1.25, then one more, 1.25, that is our max speed, so about 7.9 is what I'm going to do with. And basically, we want to make sure that we're always less than the maximum velocity. 
and again velocity dot y is greater than negative of that again we'll come down here and then we can copy this last line here so again we just want to make sure that we don't hit that maximum velocity so there's that um, finally what we can do as well is we can actually simplify this further I don't know why I did this before but we actually oh yeah because we have two different players um, no. let me just copy this then so we just want to copy this and this will go into there and there and we'll copy the negative version of that Oops. and we're going to go through in just a second and optimize that code a little bit better so we don't have two statements like that but for now we're going to keep it like that and what this is going to do is it's going to cap out our velocity off of the ball at a certain point. So it's going to cap out right about there. At least it should have. So let's go through now and change that because we raised that too much. Let's change it to 7.5 instead. And that'll make sure we don't get too much faster. So, there's that. Let's go ahead and speed the ball up a little bit. And that's going to be our max velocity, hopefully. Oops, still not it. So I think I did too much then. So let's try this again. 4 times 1.25 that times 1.25 we'll keep it at 6.25 6.0 never gets faster than 6 hopefully that'll work again I'm just kinda of toying with numbers here now I'm not really uh, focusing too much on the math probably which probably isn't good but it'll work for now still going a little fast so let's see what's going on here so we want to check player 2 specifically that's where it seems to be getting a little crazy um, so if our velocity is greater than zero and the velocity of the ball is less than a max speed um, then we do that so let's go through now and see where that is coming in So right there, we have our y, which is 4. Let's see where our velocity is. So in this case, it's uh, 2.25. So it's gone down. So now when it goes back up, it'll be 5.026. So again, let's see what our velocity is, negative 11. So, that times 1.25. Hmm. Ah, so there's a problem. So what we want to do is we actually want to have this be absolute value of our velocity. And go through and do that, that. And copy that to there. And copy that to there. So that'll make sure that he can't speed up the ball. We still can. Um, past that point, but we're going to make sure that this one can't. Strange. So 
Let's see what's going on. our velocity? Negative 25. Hmm. Oops, forgot one. That's weird. We can mess that up. There we go. We'll go ahead and fix that there as well. over. So that'll prevent our uh, velocity from getting a little too high. So that'll be our max there, hopefully. Yep. So of course we can go through and set that to be a little bit better. Uh, let's set that to 5. And that'll keep it at that nice in-between pace that we had going on uh, after two minutes or so. So there it is, slowed down. So there's that nice little pace we have there. Now the big thing that we'll want to do is when we pick the target, we'll want to have different algorithms for that. There's that, um, and that's on the easy difficulty, obviously, for the player, or for the AI. So, setting it to 2 and 3 will, of course, make that a lot harder. So, now that we have all of that, let's go through and pick out our target. The other thing I want to do as well, however, is I want to take this, and what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of it from here, because um, we no longer need it there. Because we're using the absolute value, we can actually do is we can do if that and then we'll come down here and then again if that and then come down here and there's that so let's go ahead and clean up this section of code. So one of the big things with this is that we're checking against uh, two different paddles here. So let's go through and what we're going to need to do instead is we're going to need to check for the uh, two players. So we have our, so let's do void add velocity. And what this is gonna do is it's going to add the velocity on um, paddle, paddle, and this will let us to go through and more easily uh, check for velocity changes that we need to add, um, rather than doing it like we were previously with all those giant if statements and stuff. Um, so yeah, so we'll go through and add that there. And we'll have this here. Void, add paddle velocity. And the last thing that we'll need to do is change this from player one to paddle. And again, player one to paddle, player one to paddle. And we'll come here and take this player one to make sure that we're not using it anywhere else. And you can see that when you select something in Visual Studio, it'll highlight it like that. We can go through now and quickly see that there is nothing there. So now all we have to do is do this, add velocity to this player one, and in this case we'll come down here and do the same thing but for player two. So there's that. So now we can have this uh, nice little uh, bouncing effect. Now the big thing again is that uh, he is very fidgety there, so what we're going to want to do is add on uh, some bounds, increase the boundaries for what we did uh, before. 
So before we're using five, first off again we can go through and we can, um, eh, we don't really need to. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to do uh, fine. And this is what this is going to be is it's basically going to be a ball bounds, which is basically going to define uh, what exactly our bounds are for where the ball can be. And we'll, we'll be a little bit more specific, which is AI ball bounds, which is basically where the paddle should be keeping the ball within each time. So we'll go here and we'll do that and that and that and that. And what this will let us do is more easily increase or decrease this. Now the big thing as well is we want to make sure that we also set the velocity back to zero if uh, the ball is, in, is within this, those bounds. So we'll do that, come here and do else, and add that there. That'll make sure that he kind of stops when he gets there, um, and it'll smooth it out a little bit better. So you'll notice he's not jumping around now. Um, that's because we've added that smoothing ability. So it's a much smoother uh, look to it. And again, we're just kind of picking a random Y for him to uh, sit at. And now what we're going to do is we want to go through and have him be intelligent and try and actually pick out where he thinks the player is going to hit the ball to. Um, what that'll do is it'll make him go there, but it might not be the right spot, which would take him longer to get back. So you'll see right there, uh, that was a very close call for him. Oof, that was a close call for me. Now the big thing is that uh, he's going the same speed as the ball. So what we're actually going to want to do is either speed up the ball more or speed down the players um, that by changing the paddle speed. So what we're actually going to go do is we're going to make the ball go faster. Um, generally, when you slow down a player, uh, it creates this feeling the game is going slow. Um, it's really noticeable in things, uh, in a lot of games, um, Smash Bros. is a great example of that. But I'd rather increase the ball speed than that, because otherwise we're going to get this weird effect. So, what we're going to do as well is that we, um, when we multiply this by 1.25, we get our max speed. So we're going to do, now that we're increasing it to 6, we're going to need to do 6 times 1. 0.25 to get our new max speed. Um, and an easier way we can actually do this is we can do that times 1.25 and that'll go ahead and make sure that we are automatically getting our proper speeds. So if we do that. Now that's a little too fast, um, so in this case it might be better actually to slow down the player. So let's go through and try a few different uh, speeds for things. We'll see how this looks, but if this is still going too fast, I guess we're going to probably yeah, we're going to have to speed down our characters. So there is that. Let's go through, and we'll just speed them down by three. That'll make things a little bit more challenging. Um, I don't particularly like doing that, but unfortunately, in this case, it's the best uh, way that we're going to be able to do this. So there's that. So what we'll probably want to do is also slow down the AI of the paddle normally before as well. Um, we did set it to the most difficult challenge version, so let's just add that to 1.25 and we'll change that to 0.75, so it'll be increments of that instead. Um, so that should hopefully give us a nice advantage, because we're better at predicting than our little AI. So now he is definitely beatable. Um, change that to 1.3 instead, and that'll make him just about the right difficulty on this setting. Because again, we want to make sure that the balls can um, outpace him 
but we also want to make sure that we can have a proper challenge. So um, that should hopefully be good enough for now. Um, we have our diff different difficulties now. The big thing that's going to make the biggest difference in our AI and our paddle AI is now going to be this uh, target picking section. So um, you'll notice here that we just kind of randomly pick around. What we're actually going to want to do is try and guess how the ball is going to ricochet and where the AI should go based on that. So let's see here now. Um, real quick, I'd like to check one thing. So let's see here. So this is where we want to add in good target. Now, um, this is something that's new to me. I've never actually tried to do this before. So what I'm going to do is, it's going to be based on where the ball is going on, based on an X, Y, and then whether or not he thinks the player is going to speed up or speed down. Um, so the speed up, speed down will keep random still, and then everything else will be based on that. So what we need to do is we need to basically calculate where exactly the ball is going to go. So this is going to basically get into ray picking, uh, ray, ray tracing effectively, um, to do this properly. Because basically when the ball, so we'll start that, stop that, so when he hits the ball, we'll notice that the ball is going down. So let's say I hit this, it's going to ricochet down this way because of the direction it's going currently. Um, so he needs to decide whether it's going to go down that way or whether I'm going to try and spin it upward. Um, now that portion right there is where we're going to have to pick some randomity. There's three things that we could do. We could spin it further down that way faster. We could spin it up that way. We can just keep it going straight. And right now he just kind of picks a random position. Um, so you'll notice now that I didn't really do anything. So he sped it up. So now we'll speed it up. Again, we could do that. So there's a whole variety of ways that we can go through and uh, affect that. Um, I actually am going to go back over here. And I'm going to change this back to 1.5 because he did not seem to be able to keep up with that. Which he should have based on his intelligence. Now remember, this AI should be uh, completely destroyed, like completely tough. This should be our hardest AI to go against. Um, so we need to make sure that he is able to keep up with everything adequately, but still beatable. And the big factor that's going to determine how uh, whether the players can beat him is going to need to be. Um, the targeting system, whether they can outfool him on that, and I'll show you how we're going to make that happen, um, and then um, some, and then also being able to keep up with him. So in level two, there should be moments where uh, you'll need to use that to your advantage, but for the most part, pure speed will beat him, and then uh, everything else for the normal game is where we'll have that go. So yeah, this looks like it's pretty basic, uh, so that looks good to me. So here is where we're going to want to have his targeting system uh, be the biggest thing. So for picking a target, we need to go through and we need to pick out the angle at which it's going to hit, so where we think it's going to hit, um, and then 
we need to, from that, decide where to go. So what we're going to do, um, we could do ray tracing, or we could do something else. In this case, I am thinking that it's going to be better AI if we actually do the ray tracing section of it all. So I'm going to give that a try. We'll see how it goes. So um, for those who are not remembering a lot of their math and algebra and stuff, let's go through this real quick. So the equation of a line can be thought of as y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope of our line and b is our y-intercept. Um, another way to think of this is that for every point on the line, x is our point. Um, and actually we'll make p our point. So every point on the line can be thought of as an origin times a direction plus, or sorry, sorry, a distance, our direction times our velocity plus an origin. So we have a point of origin, which in this case will be wherever the ball was, origin, wherever the ball is when we start targeting. We're going to have a direction, which is where it's going to be uh, going. So that's going to be, in this case, um, the ball's velocity. So we have P is our point, O is our ball origin. Direction is going to be the magnitude, magnitude of the velocity, and then V is just our uh, ball velocity. So what we can do with this now is we can get where um, this should fall. Now the big thing that we're actually going to be checking for specifically is whether or not it's going to hit the top of the bottom first of all, because we need to see um, if it hits the top or the bottom, we need to see where, we need to see how that's going to affect it. And then we need to go through and, um, so when it hits that top, it's going to bounce off. So we needed to determine how it's going to hit it, how it's going to bounce off, where it's going to go after it bounces off. And then once it bounces off of the player, we need to decide how we think the player is going to hit it. Once that happens, we have to determine how that's going to ricochet. Um, and if you think about it, that's kind of what we do. You know, we, as humans, we go through and we do all of those predictions. We just do them very, very fast, so we don't have time to think about it. So, for example, right now, I'm thinking about where I'm going to hit it, and then as he hits it, I'm waiting to see what's going to go on. I try and keep myself in a rather average area, and then as I do that, I follow the ball around. So, really, it's about um, predicting your player's movements properly. So this is actually going to be a very, very tough AI to play against at times, but we'll be able to use some factors to our advantage. Um, particularly, we're going to have him, I'm going to try and make it so that he'll learn a little bit more about what you're doing, and then we'll go from there. So after we do all of this, we're going to go through then and update some of the look and feel of the game, and then we'll be all set. So in this case, we're going to have a private method again. Um, what this is going to be is it's going to be a um, select target method. Target. And um, so the biggest thing, well, we'll keep it like that for now and you'll see what we're going to do. So select target void paddle AI select target. this select target. So we're going to fix all of that. So the big things that we want to do, we have our ball, we have our paddles. Um, what we want to do first off is we want to make sure and see whether or not it's going to hit the top. So if it hits top of the screen, then our point is going to be zero. So P would be zero when it hits the top. So if we hit the top of the screen, our P is zero, origin is origin. The uh, direction and velocity can actually be combined into one, so I'm just going to leave that as dv. It's going to be dv. And so now we just need to solve 
for whether or not that's going to be equal to zero. Um, or whether zero exists on that point. Whether there's a... a basically whether our y is going to be able to get to that point or not. Um, and this isn't actually ball. This is a little trickier now. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep that as ball velocity, and we're going to change this from direction to distance traveled. Um, there's a few different ways you can think of doing a line. I'm kind of being weird on explaining this, but yeah. So we have p, the distance times the velocity plus the origin. So um, we have our velocity that we know. We have that. And our p that we're checking for is zero. So what we're actually solving for is the distance. Um, basically, we want to make sure that the distance is going to be less than the screen size. Um, if it's less than our screen size, then we know that we have hit the uh, ceiling. And the same will go for the floor and stuff as well. Basically what that means is that if you think of our uh, game screen, so we'll bring that up real quick. So if we're going this way, if our uh, velocity is set up so it's going this way, when we hit this, we're going to be off screen. So we basically want to get the current position, subtract wherever the x ends up there, and that will give us our uh, distance traveled for that. Um, this is where it go it's going to get tricky is that um, once we get the distance, what we can actually do to make this a little simpler is we can check for our x. So we'll get d. And then once we get that, we'll just plug in dv plus o, and we'll make sure that the uh, point, so our velocity in this case will be for the x, and we will then check that we get a valid point that was in, is within the screen limits. So this is sounding a little confusing, so I'm just going to go through and code it, and you guys will kind of see how this works out um, in the end. So what we're going to do is... So we're going to create four variables. We're going to have our float p that we're checking for, which in this case will be 0. Then we're going to get our float origin, which in this case is the uh, this ball object dot get position dot y. That's our origin. And then we get our velocity is equal to this ball object velocity dot y. And um, then we're going to get the distance. So float d is equal to, uh, so in this case, it's going to be uh, p minus o, and then divided by velocity. Right. So the distance times the velocity plus the origin. So distance plus the velocity times the origin. So p minus o, so the point minus the origin, and then that divided by the velocity. And it's origin divided by the velocity. So now that we have that, we can go through and we want to get the x position. So now we want to do uh, p is going to be equal to d times v plus o. And in this case, we're going to want to change some things up. Um, we're going to want to change up specifically... No, actually... Let's see how to best do this. Sorry, I'm new to this whole section of things. I've only recently started dealing with some of these vector math, so you're kind of watching me figure some of this out as well. Because basically what we want to do is we want to check whether or not we're going to collide with that point. Because um, that point is on our line, but we want to see whether or not we're, our x is going to be off screen. So the distance traveled is going to remain, be different for each one of those. So 
it shouldn't be that different. So let's just go ahead and give this a try. Equal to d times e plus o, except in this case our velocity needs to be v is equal to this ball object dot velocity dot x, and o is equal to this ball object get position dot x. And then if p is greater is less than zero is greater than is uh, greater than 800 is our window width correct correct 800 then we're just gonna for now um, set the target to be random again right, so you get two right here. mod 600 and what we're going to do is if we get that, then we're going to jump there, or set a break point there. So in this case, that should trigger there. Yep. So you'll see now that um, because the P's are set up so because of that, um, that in that case, uh, it did trigger. So if that's the case, then we're going to want to see how it's going to bounce off and we're going to want to do something based on that. So for now what we're going to do is we're going to leave that as random. And what that basically says is that it's going to hit the paddle else. So if we know that it's going to hit the wall, that's where we're going to change things up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do px, ox, and bx. Um, and then that is our distance. So we're going to go, whoops, that should be y, 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 and y, and then float bx, px, ox, and if px is that, and px is that, then we do one thing. Otherwise, we're going to want to now calculate this for the second half of it which is going to be where it's going to end up now. So let's go through real quick and we're going to do, we're going to make sure that we're reading the correct values. We need to make sure we include the std lib. IO stream. So bring that there. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell where the paddle thinks the ball is going to hit. Except in that case, apparently. Oops, that's right. We need to actually take this set that there. Instead. So you'll notice that it said 708, which sounds about right based on where we were. So that looks like it's correct. Uh, correct. Um, 1102. That was not correct. 613. Actually, maybe it was. No, that was definitely not correct. probably want to do is make this absolute as well, which will probably help a little bit. So 
that seems okay. So we'll need to make sure as well that we That should have worked, actually. <sighs> that's not just distance Y. out of bounds, we'll do that. Otherwise, we will... In that case, I got it right, go into wall. Um, in this case, it should not get it right because it's going to player, which is correct. We're not checking for the bottom. We need to do that. Going to wall. Going to player. So we now need to do that for the uh, ceiling as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that to 800, which will be the floor. And in this case, it should do the opposite of all of that. Um, so let's go through and see. That should go to player, yep. And then we'll do the same thing here, and this time it should go to wall. So that's all correct. Um, so basically we can switch out our targets like that. Um, what we want to do is now we're going to add in um, some other methods with, to help this, which are going to be full hit 
going to uh, going to ceiling, and really we can actually check this within the ball class. We don't actually need to do that um, there. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these methods there, and maybe we can figure out some cool way to use them with the players instead as well. So some of the methods we're going to have here. So we're going to have a uh, bool going to seal and bool going to floor. So we have that. So we'll put those right under here. Bool ball so we have going to seal going to floor and we can just take our method from right here so for the ceiling we're just going to return that right there um, because oops, is greater than zero and is less than a hundred. So there it is for the floor and ceiling. So there's our ceiling. Then we'll do the exact same thing for the floor, which in this case is going to be a hundred. And that will let us be able to detect that. So now what we're going to do is do that. to the ceiling or the floor, then it's going to let us know. Um, so this is the first big part of our AI algorithm here. So again, now we should be able to see it going to player. And again, to player. So now what we'll do is we'll send it down. slowly bring it back up. Send it back up. And again, you can see that it got that perfectly fine. So we can detect those differences in the ceiling and floor um, perfectly well now. You can see that again. So let's go through now and we can do some of the cooler things. So now that we know if it's going to the ceiling or the floor, um, what we can do is we can detect, um, we'll be able to go through and use these same equations to then solve, okay, once it, where is it going to be ricocheted from the player? So if it's going to the floor or the ceiling, we're just going to go through and do it randomly. But if it's going to the player, what we'll want to do is we're going to want to see how it's going to bounce off of the player. So what we have here is we're going to, instead of, um, we're going to have a solve for points X and Y. So what this is going to do is if we tell it we want to check if it's going to hit at the specific x or y point, um, we want to see how it's going to react then based on that. So what we can do is we can do um, void or float get hit x y. So in that case we get a y, hit, hit, 
y, and here we get it in x. Um, and basically, this is going to let us use those to our advantage to detect where we're going to hit and such. So ball, hit, hit, x, float, y. So in this case, what we're doing is we give it a y, which in this case is here. We solve for the x, and then we return the px. We do the exact same thing, but for our uh, x point. So this requires us to now um, flip this around just a bit. So we're going to come here. We're going to do that. And oops. so instead, we give it the x, the y, and our px is now equal to just x. Then we come here, we solve for our distance through the x's, and then we come here and we do the y, the y, 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 and then we solve for our py by using our y values. Finally, we come down here, we return the y. So that'll let us ask where the ball is going to hit at specific points. Um, the big thing that we also need to be able to do, though, is we need to be able to... Um, we need to be able to use custom velocities and stuff. Um, so what we want to do... And I'm not really going to go full into this. Um, I'm just going to say that... When it hits the ceiling or the floor, it's just going to uh, randomly go somewhere. And then, um, depending on where it hits with the X position, we'll do something else. Um, this is going to be a super simplistic AI just for the sake of time. Um, but this is basically how you can go through and predictively get, okay, this is how our ball is going to hit there. And you could, of course, go even further. You could start doing this multiple times. You could say, okay, it hits the ceiling here. How's it going to hit the paddle? And then once it hits the paddle, how's it going to hit me? Um, you could actually make, in theory, a perfect Pong AI based on all of this and based on what the likeliness of the player is. So it's actually kind of funny to make an AI that's uh, perfect. So now that we have all of that in... Let's go through and do this. Ball object hit x, get hit y, and the x we're going to give it is 0. Float y is equal to that. And once we get where that's going to hit, what we can do is we can check the new velocity based on when it goes uh, back at us. And we, what we'll do is we'll do this equal to this ball object and what we're going to do is get our velocity dot x dot y and we're going to make that negative so we're going to see how that should hit us and so what this means is again we're going to take this same equation from here and we're going to see where on the y axis it should hit us then so let's go through now and just copy and paste that there So we have that. Let me just go ahead and copy this. And then copy that. Again, you can actually just put that there, because that's our new Y there. And what we're actually doing is we're solving for Y. Um, in this case, we just want to solve where we're going to get hit. Um, based on that, so we have our y hit there, we have our origin, um, now what we want to do is we want to see where our y hit point is going to be, so in this case, it's going to be float py is equal to, float d is equal to 800, because that's our x axis, um, and that's going to be equal to our equation from right here, 
which up here you can see it's dB plus O, so D times D, dY plus OY. So we have our point of Y contact, which is going to be our target. So we can actually just do target Y is equal to that. And I'm going to go ahead and add in the this is there. That way it be a little bit easier to make sure that when you go through and read this later, you know where it is. So now what we'll be able to do is, based on that, get our So right now we're getting a lot of random points hit, but wow, you got a point on us pretty well. Um, and again, this is our hardest AI. Isn't it? I thought it was our hardest. Let's double check this. Maybe it's not. Yeah, that's our hardest. Let's see what he predicts. So he predicted not very correct on there. So let's see here. What do we do wrong on that? Target Y. So let's see what this target comes out to when that happens. So the target right now is just zero. If we go through and step through, we get negative 307. So the reason for that is because we are getting a... So we need to make this 600 minus this get global bounds dot width. So really what we're going to want to do is solve for the uh, for the x. So let's do this. So we don't need to worry about where the player is, but what we do need to worry about is where the So that solves that. So we get our hit position for that. And then once we have our hit position, we need our distance. So we need to get our distance there. So. x equal to this ball object velocity dot x so we have our v our o we our point px is going to be equal to this get global bounds dot left and then D is just going to be equal to PX minus OX over BX. And that should hopefully get us a better, better target looking location. So let's see what this gives us. So in this case, the position that we get again is now 315, so that's going to be a little bit better at least. So again, he's being a little bit more predictive now, which is good.
So, we have a much, much smarter AI now, especially on level 3. Um, so, level 3's AI is definitely a lot more complicated. we could have him guess completely wrong at times in order to simplify that. We're not going to do that. So, now that we have our basic uh, AI going there, what we're going to do is clean up the game and make it look pretty. So, the first thing that I want to do is I want to add a slight delay when the ball gets stuck somewhere. Um, what this means is that when it's, it, it's going to have this kind of sticking effect to things. Um, so what we want to do instead is we're going to have a um, int delay, which is basically going to be a delay for how long the ball has been sticking, how many frames, and then once it hits that point, we'll do it. Um, and actually what we'll do is we'll do sf clock delay timer, sf time delay elapsed. And this is going to make everything go much, much smoother. Um, so now what we can do is coming down here to this, um, if we get a collision, then what we're going to do is we're going to do delay timer dot get elapse time dot So, and then we need to have a boolean for the timer restart. So we're going to do if this timer restart, then this delay timer restart. This timer restart is equal to false. Otherwise, this delay lapse is equal to this number dot get lapse time. Delay lapse dot as microseconds. We're going to again do that 16666, which is one frame, times, and we're going to wait about 20 frames. So once 20 frames have elapsed, or, you know, that period of time for which those frames should occur, then this timer restart is going to be equal to true, because we can restart that. And then we're also going to stick this, or pop this off. Um, this is going to add a really, really nice little bounce effect to everything, wherein it kind of sticks to the wall, almost, for a second, or whatever it's hitting. Um, so let's see here. that, get that, and this should work, and it's going to be very brief, oh, and also we need to pause the ball from moving, so, else, this will do is we're going to check that there's not a timer restart before we update things. So if that's the case then it won't move at all and it'll look okay. So go ahead and do that. So that's going to be a little too short I guess. So let's go ahead and add in 60 
and what we'll actually do is stick FPS. play around with this and see how this looks. And it's going to be really brief, so as a result we might want to increase that even further. So we'll do 120 frames, that it'll stick. And finally, If that, then we have to. True. That'll make sure to update that. And that's a little too long again, so let's undo that. Again, a little too long, so let's uh, lower that again. 20. So it's only going to be 20 frames now that it does that. Again, a little too long, so let's lower that to 10 frames. little too long again so let's just do one frame and see how that looks and then we'll raise it so that already looks a little bit better um, two frames should be enough to give it this stick and bounce effect so that looked pretty good so you can kind of see that there got a nice little stickiness to it. Let's try four. Really want to see this like uh, this really need a little effect to it. A little too much there. So three is probably going to be right where we want it. So let's go ahead and try that. So there's that. So that looks pretty good now. However, that is a little bit more like a um, bit of lag, so I'm not going to do that. We're going to just do that. Um, keep it very, very minimal. In fact, so this should be the best one then is two. So there's that. So that looks pretty good, I think. Um, next up, let's go through and polish the main menu. Um, the big thing I want to add is I want to add the ability to choose different um, is to choose different difficulties. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have int um, ai difficulty, and what this is going to do is it's going to um, allow us to pick the difficulty, and then also to switch um, to using um, non AIs. So what we're going to do. So we're going to switch this uh, difficulty. So um, by default, it'll be easy. So case zero, we'll set player two to be a easy API, AI. And then zero, one, two. So that'll be how we do that. And then on case three, player two, will be equal to new paddle player, oops, which will be player one, or two in this case. And now that we have that, there's that. So, 
Paddle AI. Paddle AI. Paddle player. Paddle player. Okay. So the other big thing that we will want to do is take this set ball. So we'll take that, put that in here. That, put that into here. Hopefully no errors this time. Oops, nope. Item paddle.cpp, and this is where we're going to define some of these things. So, number include paddle.h. So we can't set the ball there because the ball needs to see the patterns. So I forgot about that. Paddle AI.
pass that there, pass that there, pass that there, and what we'll do actually interpret cast Let's do that. There's that, there's that, there's that. Let's make sure that we're getting all of our updates properly. That's going to be our biggest challenge is that. Again, that might run into errors there. Now the big thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we check the casting types for this. So let me just Google how to do that real quick because I don't actually remember in C++. There we go. So, we need to call the update. So, if type ID equals of Make it move. Let's see. Go ahead and do that. Let's see here. Ah, so the problem here is that our ball object is null. So again, we'll need to come here and do that. Oops. Do that there. So that will make sure that that happens. So now we've got it set up so that it has the different difficulties. Now the big thing we're going to want to do is check the, um, first off we're going to want to make sure that we check for different settings. So let's go through first and make sure that we can have the AI catch up at all the different levels. So in that case that's still not fast enough, so we'll set that to 0, set that to 1, set this here to 2, that should be good enough. So the easiest difficulty, he just needs to be able to get up there. So there's that. And then finally, let's go through and update the main menu. So the main menu, what we're going to do now as well, is we're going to have the play now say uh, easy, medium, and difficult, depending on which way you uh, select. So we'll start it out at easy. And what will happen is we're going to check for some other key presses now as well. So we'll go to main menu, up key, down key, left key, right key, and int uh, mode. So mode by default will be zero. Zero. Also going to have this here for the other keys. 
left, left key, and then right key, and right. And we're going to do the same thing here. And in this case, there are uh, four, four modes, three modes, four modes. So if we're greater than three, or if we're less than we're zero, we'll go there. And then, um, so then we have that. And then we're going to do switch mode. Case zero. So in case zero, we do this play set string to easy. So we have zero, one, two, and three. Two, one. Medium. Hard. And hold time. Then new main game this mode and we'll come over to main game dot h we'll do public main game mode and mode right we get that the big thing as well is that we need to come to our main menu we need to do the same thing here for our ups and our left and right keys so we have left right so now if we come here and we do this you can go through and you can select different difficulties so there's easy moves him pretty slow, medium moves him a bit faster, hard moves him much much faster and gives him a bit more intelligence, and multi will let us use uh, those keys. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to go to our main game, and we need to update that to also handle for the AI paddles. So we'll come here, or for the player paddles else player and in that case we want to cast it to a paddle player and update it that way so we'll go through and do multi now and you can see that we can go through now and do that so we have multiplayer able to be uh, used now we have our different difficulties. So, there is our base game. So let's go through and add a few more things. So we have all of that. Let's add in some music. So what we are going to do now is we're going to do freestockmusic.com because I absolutely love them. And we're going to go there, free music. Log in there real quick. And let's see here. Let's do some kind of electronic with this. So, in this case, let's see how this one sounds. Turn down my volume to not blast your ears. So again, they're still having issues it looks like. That sounds pretty cool. So we'll go through and we'll do that. Good. 
So, let's go here now and add that in. So we're just going to make this run in the background the whole time. So we have um, SF, F, SF, first off, you come up here and do include F, uh, SFML audio. And then we will come here and do SF uh, sound buffer, buffer, sound buffer, and SF sound music. We'll change this to music buffer. And what we're going to do is we're going to set our music buffer to load from a file. Load from file sound slash music dot wave. And then this is going to load from the music buffer. And then music set loop true and music music dot play. And then once we quit the game, we do music dot stop. So that'll go through now. And if we load this up. not too bad. Um, so, so we have our nice little music now. So let's go through now and um, what we're going to do is make the main menu look a little nicer. So first off, we want to have the uh, menu items grow and shrink. So we're going to come here, and what we're going to do is we'll see that we've already set the origin there. So all we have to do now is for the selected item, um, go through and scale that particular one. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this, play, set scale to 1 and 1. We're going to do the same thing for quit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to main game dot main menu dot h. We're going to now add in a float scale, which is basically just going to uh, grow and shrink the menu items. So scale, and it needs to be one by default. Ooh, excuse me. Put that up there. Copy that, come down here, and we're going to switch through our selected items. In case zero, we're going to do set scale. And then we're going to have the quit do the same for one. And then we're going to need to have a um, float scale inc, which is the uh, incrementer for the scale. So this scale inc is equal to 0.1f. And we're probably going to want to uh, do that a little bit less, so we're going to do 0.01. And we're going to also have a uh, max scale. So define max scale. We'll set that equal to uh, 1.5f. If this scale is greater than max scale times equals negative 1, so that'll go through and uh, make it go the opposite way. Yes, the absolute value of the scale, and that's a little too big for me, so we're going to uh, set that to 1.3 instead. Oops. So we'll see how big this gets.
min scale. So we're going to need a min scale as well. Forgot about that. And that's going to be 0 0.7, so plus or minus 0.3. That's a little uh, too slow, I would say, for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a scale speed, and we're also going to change how we do that. Scale speed. Three. Max scale. that and we're going to change that to point 